This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get techie, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the wonderful, sunny, and warming and thawing uh, Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA at Sorgatron Media Studios. And uh, we're going to have a fun one here. I'm, I'm straight off the plane from Los Angeles and so glad to be here and talking tech with you guys uh, out here. With me on the couch is Katie Dudas. She's the Hi. director of... I just blanked. Director of marketing and sales at the at the scare house. Close enough. Hey, <laughs> you sell scare houses. See. You sell the scare I houses. Scare ho- I sell them. What about you? You market houses? the scare houses and sell them. So yes. really, really, this whole time you've been a realtor of haunted houses. Shh, don't tell anyone. Of scare house. <laughs> oh, scare house. Tax to you. season is without over yet. her. Apparently, without her license. So don't tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> And also with us is John Chichilla. He's a gadget guru, a big bank international esquire. How's it going? Welcome back. Welcome. M- m- you, you've crossed, crossed multiple time zones. Yes, I did. Us. And holy crap, was it confusing. Um, no, yeah, there's a there's a lot of that. Like the when you show up and it's like, you know, Google Google Calendar's like, um, so do you want me to change this? And you go start to schedule things for the next week and realize you just screwed everything up. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's as if you came back to the future it, it, it is it is <laughs> it is um which is actually funny because one guy told us we were only a couple miles away from marty mcfly's house uh from back to the future that they used ah. i was in van nuys california do with uh arrow east or arrow west um so there's a second arrow event the last of the season uh and uh, next week i'll be going to maryland for baja and uh, and starting up that whole part of the season and uh, it, it was, of course, they were like, they were like, oh, this has happened. They said, like, just two blocks up is where they filmed all the miniature stuff for Star Wars. And I was like, you know, not to downplay this, but we are, like, right next to Hollywood. I'm sure you can throw a rock and find something that was in a movie. Uh, so, you know. Or a rock that was in a movie. Or a rock that was in the, this <laughs> rock. This rock was in the rock movie, uh, you know. <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> um, but, no, it was a lot of fun and, and really cool. Um, um it, it's a it, it's a pretty cool event where like you know again like the you know students are building the cars for formula and baja that i usually go film and they're building rc planes and they actually had a demonstration at the end um unaffiliated uh, but there was somebody else that did a demonstration of like a good um uh plane i don't know if you saw some of the pictures like they're having that thing float by the prop and everything and, and like fly backwards and it was it was pretty cool to see I, i've seen some i've seen some rc planes and when i when i say I, i've seen some like I'm talking ones that don't look as big as the ones like mm-hmm. from the pictures and video I saw. They looked they were big. They looked they were big. big. They were like wingspans of like there were some good eight foot wing, wingspans probably. Wow. OK. And then and then seeing them because the first day was actually in a hotel and seeing them trying to get those into the doorway. So <laughs> because they did tech inspection in one of the ballrooms there. Um, it was it was it was pretty cool. It, it was uh, cool to be a part of that and and meet everybody from um, Lockheed Martin that was a part of that too. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, in in very good company. And I, I was chatting with some of the because they actually the students don't fly the planes usually. They actually have the local robots. Like, no, no, not robots. <laughs> RC flyers. Um, I think it was the Valley the Valley Flyers um, mm-hmm. out there in Van Nuys. Uh, we're doing this, so like they're professional or you know. Well, I don't know about professional, but like, you know, the well skilled, best flyers, hobbyists in the area, right? And because, you know, these are experimental planes and they're trying to keep them up. And there's some interesting wind conditions and, and, and the crashes are a lot of fun too. Uh, those videos should be coming up here in the next several weeks. And I'll be sure to share those on Awesome Cast as well. And I think you guys will be interested in in that too so anyways uh oh and producer missy's on strike so nobody's going to be uh um correcting me 
when I screw up the format, unless except for maybe yells from the other room. Uh, and uh, and thank you to our guest Billy for hanging out too. We have hey, uh, and uh, we we got a lot of fun stuff going on here tonight in the studio, and uh, and some really cool stuff happened over the weekend too. But anyways. And some interesting stuff having in Washington as we speak. Uh, this is the Awesome Cast. Mm-hmm. You can check it out. Of course, at awesomecast.com. It's up on the Twitter, the Facebook. Look for Awesome Cast, Awesome Cast at sorgatronmedia.com. If you want to email us about anything like advertising rates or anything, any stories or anything you'd like to uh, uh, contribute. And also, uh, the Awesome Cast Facebook group is where a lot of our conversation has been happening around stories for the week. Uh, we actually bring in stories that are contributed there for you guys to participate in. And of course, please subscribe and rate us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, um, Google Play Music. And I already said YouTube, but there's the video and Facebook for video as well. And we are live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on that Facebook Live for the awesome cast. Thank you to our friends, Rivers Edge, PGH.com. They stream us uh, again Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern time for you guys here in the Pittsburgh area. And worldwide, actually, you can get uh, Rivers Edge over on the TuneIn app um, or on Rivers Edge, PGH.com. And also our friends, because I was just on the 405 just yesterday, uh, the 405media.com, our friends on the West Coast that are carrying us weekdays, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern, five days a week, uh, you can uh, you can uh, have your lunch over some awesome casts and recap some of the discussions that we had. So um, so thanks a lot to those guys for supporting us. And I believe this Sunday I also will be showing up on the River's Edge uh, on River Talk for our awesome thing of the month. This will be the third time doing it. We're, we're having a lot of fun going in there and talking stories with uh, Brian Brian Crawford and the gang over there too. And Brian has been. Um, he has some more stuff, some more awesome thing he's going to be uh, contributing here to the show uh, very soon because I think we just booked him in a couple weeks to come back. And uh, do, 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 do. If you want to be in our studio audience, like Billy, uh, hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Billy hits me up on Facebook because we, we, we Facebook. If you have me on Facebook, you can ask there too, officially, but uh, or unofficially. Uh, but no, hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. We'll put a seat out for you. We got plenty of room here in the studio, and we have some fun here. Um, so the more of the story is be like Billy. Be like Billy. <laughs> be like Billy. So, uh, Chili, can you pull the mic a little closer to you there? Um, and also thanks to our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club five dollar level. They're going to get interesting stories about um, how how people don't make video games for four year olds that seem like they should be for for four year olds with Chilla. Uh, a pretty cool cover. It was an interesting conversation. <laughs> the plights of parenthood in electronics, right? Yes. And also, uh, that's Matt Weller that's supporting us at the $5 level. And at the $1 fan of the show level is uh, Michael Fedor. Michael, Mike Fedor Show on Twitter as well. Thank you so much, guys. Literally helping us keep the lights on around here. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. I want to start with Hoopla. Can I talk about Hoopla? Yes, I want to hear I want to hear about all the Hoopla. About the I want to tell you all about the Hoopla. And uh, it, it, so... If you uh, this is this is going to be a very uh, Pittsburgh uh, centric story, I think a little bit, but this may apply to you wherever you may be. So, I love the library. I get my comic books. I just return my comic books because I always wait till the last day to return them, even though I read them two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> but maybe I don't need to do that anymore. Uh, so they they've had digital solutions in the past. Like I remember at one point there was an app that um, you could go. Um, listen to things, you know, listen to audiobooks, but it wouldn't work on my iPhone because they downloaded it as WMAs. You know, things like that. Like weird, I think it was Overdrive was the app they used to use. It wasn't very good. It, it, you know, it, I wasn't really big on using it. So um, it, it kind of it kind of went away as, as an option for me. So um, I, and I don't know who, who told me about this or it came up in a Facebook maybe, but they said download Hoopla. So Hoopla is uh, uh it's in basically every all the stores basically all the stores and uh it's you 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 download it you insert your your membership number and password for for your account like you'd use if you're logging into the online uh system over there and you get man a little bit of everything here's a little bit if you guys are on video from um from my uh, uh from the phone itself actually i mean it's it's got movies and it, it's got it's got movies. It's got comic books. It's got music. It has um, audio books and cart even comic books. Um, I have not dived into 
And I just realized that this knows me so well because it's showing me the Transformers movie from 1985 with Orson Welles. Mm -hmm. um, and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So, yeah, they, they, they've been paying attention to me a little bit. They're scraping your Facebook data. No, the, the, the fact that I was looking for Transformers comic books. Probably. Uh, <laughs> But uh, so this is what got me through my recent trip. So you can you you get um, let's see it says I can borrow eight more titles this month. Yeah, so I think you get eight titles, and that's book, movie, DVD, uh, you yeah, know, book, movie, audio book, whatever the case may be, right? So I loaded up a bunch of these comic books, getting some tweets, um, and you know they download to your device. So on the plane, I was I was reading Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War, and the infinite the more recent um, Infinity. Um, um, crossover uh from marvel you know kind of getting ready for the new avengers movie coming up catching up on what the Thanos guy is about you know and all that right um and it works really well it it, it does the get in here a little bit it does the um single panel situation and spoiler alerts for uh infinity if you haven't read it here uh but, so so it's completely readable on the phone of course i got the newer uh, iphone um 8 plus so i have a bigger screen to read this and it, it which is such a good decision uh, to get something you, you bigger. You didn't have like this, this in the 10 inch iPad Pro? The 12, the 12 inch? inch? I'm not bringing the 12 inch on. Like, that seems like too much for a plane, is, is a 12 inch iPad. But in the view that would require a screen like that, I needed Final Cut for. So I'm not doing that on a plane. Not, not on Southwest, at least. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, this is, this has been a dream. And also, I've been listening to. Um, the Ask Gary V book, um, the audiobook for that for the last couple months. And it's, but basically you have, um, if you go through here, it, it tells you, whoop, whoop, whoop. it tells you, hey, there it is. Um, it tells you like you're borrowing it, right? And it'll actually go back after so long. Like it tells me there what Infinity returns on 420. <laughs> uh, Civil War 2 is going to return on 424. Uh, so, so you have a time, but, but once you do that, you can check it back out. It still counts as another borrow for your month, mm -hmm. but you get a few weeks to do it. It makes a lot of sense for this. Like the Ask Gary V thing, like I've already checked it out twice. It just uh, it just expired again, and I'll pick it up, and it picked up where I left off. It, this is a good media app. I haven't done any of the video stuff on here. I honestly did not notice it until now <laughs> to that extent. I guess probably because there's stuff that I actually pay attention to, like the Transformers movie and Bill Ted's Excellent Adventure. This could be a bit of a replacement for like Netflixing for you uh, well, to a certain point if you do like the Friday might rental movie or something, right? The thing that impressed me about this, and I don't know if you've seen where Amazon's trying to compete more with the Chromecast and lower the price of their Fire Sticks, mm -hmm. but they... It's available on the Amazon store and Apple TV and is really? Chromecast and is Chromecast and so you, you cast you, it. So that makes sense because I saw it pop up on my on my Apple TV and I'm like, what am I going to read a book on here? You know, a, a comic book or something. But I didn't realize the video portion of it. But like you could airplay the Gary V to any of oh, your absolutely. speakers or you, I mean, I'm I'm going to download this and I'm almost wondering. Chill. We all Chill. share. They have short circuit on here. <laughs> they, they steve Schoenberg at his finest we share one library account mm -hmm. and this almost makes me want to go get multiple yeah my wife has her own my, ha my wife has her own for checkouts so you know it's taken from my eight yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. Heads. now 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 it's like it's like the streaming capabilities you know you don't go sharing it around the house so yeah um <laughs> but it, it, it it's also like great because like well maybe i don't need all these services because my library provides a good bit here if you're just looking for something to entertain you like this this is a pretty decent selection on here um i mean this isn't going to be new movies but there's definitely some on here okay i don't know but uh, these are getting kind of weird though uh <laughs> hey thelma and louise uh <laughs> you know a lot of 80s 90s older movies um things like that but uh that's that's still like pretty good i mean that's Okay, so what you get on HBO these days, guys? Ducktales the movie. Mm -hmm. is, is this the original one? Hold on a second. Nineteen ninety. Oh man. <laughs> but so, do they have Tailspin? Tailspin never did a movie, right? I don't know. Do they have? Do they have like a? They have television shows. Television shows. They do have television shows. So and and, and you know for something that has such like good content like this like i've never heard of it before i see nothing of tailspin no 
No, I'm no. definitely interested in picking this up even for some of the audiobooks. Although a very not safe for children comic book from the likes of it. Rated M. Okay, nope. We're putting that aside. Uh, but anyways, but no, it's Hoopla. Uh, I, I, I encourage you if you have a Carnegie Library um, system. So basically, any uh, if it's like the system, um, I think if you're in Allegheny County and have a membership, I believe it will work with this. Um, and again, that's a regional thing. And it may check your local library, see if they have this, or encourage them to become a part of it. I don't know what the buy-in would be from the library to be involved in something like this. But it's crazy. It's it's. I, I never jumped back on uh, Marvel Unlimited because it didn't feel like I justified the ten dollars a month or sixty dollars a year to to do that. I, I figured you know I kind of go in waves of media, and uh, this get you know for the moment is is just kind of supplanting that for now. So check it out. Uh, HooplaDigital.com if you want to check out more information. Katie, what yeah. is your awesome thing of the week? Ah. So everybody's like into this super cool portrait mode, but it's only available in certain phones. Mm -hmm. So you can't take those super cool, like your face is in focus and the background's all fuzzy. I need to, I need to take more of those. Oh, guess what? You can do it on Instagram. Oh, yes. so, back to the old phone. I'm taking it yeah, back. You can do anything you want now. Um, so Instagram, when you're taking photos for your story, uh, you select this little doodad at the bottom. You should probably update your app. If it's, you have called, it it's called focus. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's at the bottom whenever you're, when you pull up your Instagram in the stories, um, you'll get the little flip the camera around. So it's facing you like a little selfie and then scroll through the bottom, you'll see focus. And then it's going to ask you to find a face if you're not right there. Um, and then it will blur the background. So you're all fancy pants, like it's a portrait. So you, cause one of the issues is, is not all the phones have portrait mode, especially on the Android platforms. Mm -hmm. So now anyone can do it. There you go. I'm going to be fancy. So I wonder if they're using some kind of like oh. like Photoshop kind of did a bunch of stuff in the cloud mm -hmm. where they're using cloud compute to to do background Ooh. replacement. It even like that. it even it even includes my microphone. Yeah, it gets real fancy. Mm. It's so, really good. Yeah, so I'm wondering I'm wondering how they're computing that. You think it's something is it all on board or is it doing facial detection and then doing some kind of I don't know. It's Zuckerberg magic. Is it really yeah. much different than than the face stuff that we've been seeing? Um, you know, them applying like like cat eyes and and you know cat ears and yeah. stuff like to it to it. Mm -hmm. Like like I feel like it, it's it's processing power. Maybe it's not included on older phones at this point. I, was there anything? What was it about? Because I think focus the uh, portrait mode was only on the pluses, right? The portrait mode? Or portrait mode, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was on the tens and the yeah the pluses. The pluses, but the not the now. regular one. And, and yeah. like, w was that a processing thing, or was that something they were doing with the cameras? I think you it know? was the cameras. Themselves. I thought it was the cameras. Yeah. Because it was the two lens situation. Because yep. it was two lens. And I just did it with a selfie camera. Yeah. So right. now. You just... So they're doing something. Now, what you, what you don't realize is that 10 selfies with using focus on Instagram will drain your battery to <laughs> 0%. But. I mean, I don't know. I, I I'm interested to know how did they figure out how to do it, and why isn't Apple just putting this? Yeah, and well, why isn't and, everyone putting this everywhere? And I'd be curious about when you when you do this, you know, comparing it. Is it as good as you know doing it the other way? Right. It's it, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah, I, I think it actually kind of looks depending on what you're doing. It looks your face looks much sharper mm -hmm. in the Instagram focus versus like the actual portrait mode on my iphone at least when mm. i have the 10 mm. and then also what it what the really cool thing is it also does it with video which nothing is doing it with video mm -hmm. right now no phones oh so you could yeah that's Ooh. cool yeah so you just do the same thing if you were doing a story and then just hold down the button if you've never done a video and you're just like oh look at me oh look at this fancy background and look there's oh, me and then fill am i on a focus yeah. but yeah well well here we'll, we'll, we'll throw this up here so yeah yeah, it's completely a video, and it's completely blurring the uh, the screens behind me and mm -hmm. everything too. So stuff outside, that is stuff outside. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really cool. It it's great. It looks really really good. Mm. Mm. Now the interesting thing. So the one thing that I will say for the Apple portrait stuff is it packages that all up, and you can actually go back in and tweak all of that the that layer information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Photoshop and things of that nature. I wonder. I'm guessing you can't do anything after the fact to then yeah no no move stuff is, in this and is, out of focus but it's or... also one of those it's you do it you put it out there 
boom, 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 yeah. Instagram workflow kind of situation. So I, it's it's all living in there. So, oh, sorry, were you were you? No, I was gonna see. I was gonna just take a photo and then send it to myself and try to see what happened on um, Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right so so the portrait it actually it's layers in photoshop and, and, and it's stuff some like kind that. of layers in it because it's using that h e i f some some standard that new that on. new format for, oh. for grabbing that kind of stuff so the so the portrait mode on on the apple devices yes it's it's breaking apart all of those pieces of data that you can then go in and alter with a bunch of different tools in photoshop and whatnot. awesome so, awesome and i'm wondering if that's why they didn't add the video yet because how are they going to do that yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, well, hey, I'm gonna probably be coming. But she's Instagram. More of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> Instagram has all the things. So why would you do anything else until the government tells them they're not allowed to? No, uh, <laughs> uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So mine Ooh. isn't nearly as awesome. It's not as, as visually as, awesome. As, <laughs> not nearly. It's as more visually. conceptual. <laughs> it's more. Uh, <laughs> So there's there's a recommendation in front of the worldwide consortium, worldwide web consortium, um, and the uh, rec- WC three, yeah, W three C, yeah, I yeah. think you're right. I think you're right. Um, there, there's a recommendation to support um, a, an additional authentication specification mm-hmm. um, that will allow for biometrics including face id and touch id where i don't think this is to me as important that we call out the face id and touch id it's that it's going to open up all of those standards to allow for the authentication itself when you look at things like one password right one password will authenticate you. It authenticates you on the device and then hands your user ID and credential over. And it's actually filling in that user ID and password. Mm-hmm. From what it looks like, this specification, and I'm inter- I'm interested to see how they would actually make this work. It would actually somehow not pass the user ID and password and it would pass some kind of token based on the biometric because in- that, information itself. Okay, so, so, so if it's like basically passing that over, like that, that leaves kind of a... In between, mm-hmm. that, that somebody could grab that information, right? Right. If they, if they set up the right hole. And, and when you think of the number of devices, and, and like I said, I, I don't want to concentrate on Face ID and Touch ID as much as I do just biometric authentication in general. When you think about it, what Android device doesn't have a fingerprint sensor? Windows devices, laptops, etc., are getting cameras that can do hello and facial recognition. Um, fingerprint sensors on a Windows device are, I mean, you can pick them up for like 20, 30 bucks and throw them in a USB port if you don't have it directly built into the keyboard. I just think this opens up for more widespread adoption and accessibility of the biometric authentication. And personally, I feel like it's, it's a lot harder to steal your biometric data. Is it than it is to steal a Mm -hmm. user ID and password. Now, the flip side of that is, if somehow someone does steal it, I don't know how you're resetting your biometric data. You know what I mean? Like, I can't Mm -hmm. change my fingerprint. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you can at least, like, you could change your social security number. Right. It's a pain in the ass. But you can do it. But you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. You're not stuck with that, right? Right. I'm stuck with my fingerprints. Yeah, that's not happening. I'm sure somebody will be able to change it at some point. You can at least burn them off, but then you can't authenticate anything. Anyways, um, it's like the, the it's anyway. like the eyeballs in uh, Minority Report. What do you do when face recognition <laughs> fails? Right? It's like, well, yeah, it's expensive, but you could change your face. You know, mm-hmm. um, or in frustration, you just give yourself a big scar. Exactly. Partially, just because it sparked in my head, um, I was waiting because I showed up far, far too early and they wouldn't check my bags yet. Uh, so I'm hanging over there and I, I'm like, what are these weird kiosks? And I looked on the side and they say clear on the side. Have you Is heard about this? Print? It's the biometric and retinal scan. Mm-hmm. So, and, and now, and I'm you like. You have to pay for, pay for that. You have to pay for that. Yeah. It was, but it's only like 50 bucks. Yeah. It's not bad. No. But not. If you're traveling all the but time. But honestly, totally... but honestly, I have not seen a clear, um, thing hello he has uh, <laughs> he has that guy has it's going by it's going way too fast up broadway um but uh you know i have not seen clear lines um 
in all but maybe three airports. They're not here. They're not here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So so I, if you're going like I want to do New York and L A and 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 all these different you know bigger airports, then absolutely. Mm-hmm. But when you're going to like kind of smaller areas like Nebraska doesn't have clear. They don't. Spoiler alert: <laughs> Nebraska probably doesn't have clear. Probably. Uh, well, well, okay. Okay. Fully okay. I go into Lincoln. I don't go into what's the big town? Omaha. Maybe Omaha has clear. I doubt it. But anyways, I I digress. Um, but no, and, and yeah, and somebody came up and like, oh yeah, it's only fifty bucks, and they were like setting them up with it and everything, and just you know, it, it's done right there. Versus the TS pre, TSA pre-check where I had to go to an office that I had to find over on Noblestown. And and pay like eighty five dollars and took several weeks and everything like that. So it was kind of interesting. Anyways, so with that, I want to give a shout out to our friends. Hey, Katie, did you see? Did you see that picture I sent you today? Yes, I saw it on. I I, I know I know we saw it on social media, but it, it just I love that um, our friends at Slice on Broadway. Again, we you know we, we just kind of get a blast out of their social media accounts and everything too. Um, but there was this great picture that that popped up. Uh, about around opening day for the pirates of mm-hmm. uh rico just standing in there with a pie hanging out uh there it is hanging on the wall here in the uh, the og the original slice on broadway here in the beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh i, I loved it because it looked like and also there was a great anime gif of uh of a pizza spinning in the middle of the outfield or something yeah. uh that was kind of fun too so uh great guys supporting us uh supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here help feeding our, our people that roll in here around dinner time and uh and uh you know helping us keep the energy up with cheese and pepperoni uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, check them out sliceonbroadway.com they are here in Beachview of course in Carnegie PA East Liberty of Pittsburgh and the uh, PNC Park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates who were just opened up and last I knew we're doing pretty well too so um, we'll see we'll see how that goes we'll see how long that lasts Pittsburgh uh, but anyways uh, no thank you guys uh, at least you can get some pie whether we're, we're winning or losing down there at PNC Park uh, check them out PJ's underscore slice on the Twitter let them know the awesome cast sent you. So, yes? R- real quick. So there's... I went out to actually look at what Clear supports. Yeah. So they support... And, and what got me was the and. So they support over 30 airports and sports stadiums. Sports stadiums? Ooh. And, like, yeah, like Yankee Stadium. Like, they support... Like, what I don't get... Like, I guess if you're a season ticket holder, do you just retina scan in? I, I don't know. I, I guess so. Well, is, is it that? So is it a, I got a ticket in and, and my name is attached to it so I can retina scan and come in? I, I mean, and there could be a lot of security since it's in New York for certain stadiums. When it's in San Francisco on at, at uh, AT&T mm, Park. $15 a month for an annual the standard Oakland. membership. Find us, tap a finger, you are clear. So, yeah. There you go. Tim Ferriss likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Tim Ferriss likes it. He probably he's probably an investor. Uh, but anyways, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, 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 that. that's fine it, because it's kind of an interesting concept because there's like there's regular, there's TSA pre-check, and then there's clear. And and I don't know what like do they put you through anything else with the clear, or is it just something as uh, instead of TSA pre-check, we'll put you through the clear thing. That's, that's what I've heard. Is... They, they have to look through the bags at least. They have to at least X-ray something, mm-hmm. right? At least, um, you know, or, or I, I, but still, it's probably like you skip all that stuff, right? And, and guys, if you travel, at least if you travel more than uh, twice a year, I think the pre-check's worth it. So I don't know how long it lasts. Like we probably have to renew that at some point, right? No, never mind. She's on strike. She's not giving me any answers right now. She's wanting to set it up too. So, anyways, uh, also, hey, I want to give a shout out to the people in the chat room. Thank you, Brandon from the KC. I'll be heading out. That way in a few weeks, too. Um, and uh, who else is in here? My mom is in here. Hi, Mom. And uh, Ron Krause hanging out, too. Um, dropping some commentary in there. Thank you so much to those guys. Um, so in the contrib- – oh, in the local focus, hey, guys. If you- oh, By the way, our, fr- our friend Slice on Broadway are now on Grubhub, at least the Beachview location. Just want to put that out there. And I know you can Uber Eats the uh, Slice on Broadway down at PNC Park. Um but apparently DoorDash is in town, you guys. 
Has has anyone used this? I'm I'm interested. I'm not. I have not. Uh, the only so I was the only thing I know about DoorDash is I was trying to figure if they would deliver uh, if somebody would deliver in and out burger to my hotel room. I didn't get the in and out burger. <laughs> so I'm very sad about that. This is the first time in California I missed it. Um but uh like they got they got sued for delivering in and out burger because they didn't authorize it. And in and out burger's like, no, that's not okay. Um, but they're here in Pittsburgh because, uh, you know, we need yet another way for you to bring me a permani sandwich, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is what's featured here, of course. Um, I, I don't know that there's too much different. Um, there were, there was stuff about the, in this article about the, how they do have surge pricing and they did not reveal whether that portion is coming to Pittsburgh. I know things like Uber Eats do do that. Um, so I don't know what you guys think about there being yet another way to, I mean, it, it, it you know, we're probably what second or third tier city. So stuff like this is going to trickle down to us from the bigger cities anyways. I, I'm, I'm totally happy that this exists. And I think competition in this space is a great thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now that we're, now that we're, you know, kind of more uh, centralizing, I want to say decentralizing, but we're actually centralizing delivery <laughs> through a service. <laughs> But decentralizing the drivers amongst whoever wants to go do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the one thing that I'm interested in is is how are we going to get some kind of when's someone going to build a Yelp review that reviews all of these different services? Oh, that's the App Store. Well, but the App Store is I can't query on how many people in Pittsburgh. Like, what were the quality of what was the quality of this service in Pittsburgh? Mm-hmm. Um. I, I was reading, I can't remember if it was Dormont is cool or one of those Facebook groups. And someone, someone commented that they used DoorDash and it was not a pleasant experience. Mm. Um, and I don't want to have to test the waters for myself. I like being able to see the review from someone local. So well, it's uh, also one of those things. If it's, if it's one of those where, you know, it could be dependent on the driver, right? It I think it was, the, on that. I think it, it was the driver wasn't familiar the the read from from my brief scan of the review the driver wasn't familiar enough enough about the service and the restaurant wasn't familiar either Mm -hmm. and i think it was kind of a just too many people didn't know what the heck was going on and it just left yeah a mess um when i did my one day of now the cops going too fast um, anyways, <laughs> cops are allowed to go. Too yeah, fast. yeah, I guess they are. Um, sorry, distracting out there tonight. This is what happens when there's actually sun kind of still out in the neighborhood during the show. Um, but uh, yeah, because my one day of Postmates, it was just like one restaurant was like, oh, you're the so-and-so guy. Just wait right here. And the other people's like, so you're doing what now? Uh, in, 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 in that whole thing. So um, I watched somebody pick up Chipotle. <laughs> those post mates a couple weeks ago i was like out of waterworks and grabbing something and i was just like oh hey that's cool so i don't know it, it, it's interesting okay um but uh, again you know cool that we're getting a bunch of new services at least getting tried out here in town i was super i was super happy with uber eats when i used it yeah i haven't I, mean, I haven't used it in a long time but i was i was very happy with my experience. oh we did uber eats coffee one time hmm I think we got like whatever the closest decent coffee place would be. I think we ended up getting coffee from like a Brugger's Bagels in Oakland. Like we wanted a big box of coffee, mm-hmm. right? Like pre-made, ready to go. Like, and we we're having an event. We're like, oh crap, where do we get it from? And I think it ended up being from there. So there you go. Um, Amanda had this interesting article going around. Um, Instagram audits. So if you go to igaudit.io, uh, you just and I was worried about this because she brought it up and I, I'm just like, OK, yeah, but how much data did you give to, you know, all the people in this app? Actually, not not that bad. It's open. It's open data. All you do is all you do is and it's so it's so small that I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. Um, you just plug in your, um, your your Instagram account. So I plugged in my Sorgatron account in here. Uh, just your username and it goes through and it looks at all your followers and it's, it, it tells me that 90 uh, percent are real followers. As opposed to fake followers. As opposed to fake followers. Uh, and, and and as we were jo- tell, talking about beforehand, I don't know how many are Russian. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, Why does it want you to run on Taylor Hill? What's that? It says <laughs> run on Taylor Hill. Who's Taylor Hill? 
Oh, uh, maybe that's the sample. Or I got, yeah, I'm guessing. It oh, was just it. funny because after you processed yours, no, I guess it doesn't tell you who. It doesn't tell you who the non-real followers. No, are. and it, it looks like it, it takes a sample of about 200 of your followers, so it's not an entire thing. So, which is good because if you have like you know uh, twenty thousand followers, it's going to take a while. Whereas this is going to take a few. I mean, I have I don't know what eight hundred maybe. It's it's fetching some realistically. Of them. Yeah, it's it's getting some of them. Let's see, run on Jessica Jessica Alba. I wonder how many <laughs> Jessica Alba has. Let's see, fetching some followers. What do you got, Jessica Alba? I guess because they're going to have the fake followers, somebody like that, right? And I, and I see those. Kitty, you probably do too. Like when you post something, you get like the, oh, you're definitely trying to sell something related to- You want some more followers. Hey, oh yeah, oh yeah. I have like how many of my, like, you know, what, like a quarter of my likes are always like, hey, don't you want more followers? It's like, no, I want less of you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, okay. Jessica Alba has 79.7%. Um, I think uh, Amanda said that she got about 92% were real. So, Carrie House is sitting at 87. Ooh. But there's like 4,000 followers, so I think that's probably why. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's going to go down. I, I, the bigger you are, the bigger target you are, yeah. right? Because people are <laughs> going to drop. You probably get people dropping weird random comments on yours with that many. Oh, yeah. Like, like <laughs> I, I started getting that a little bit. Yeah. Like I, I, I think I'm starting to hit a threshold where those are starting to pick up on me. So, um, But, you know, we're kind of sitting at different, <laughs> different spots there uh too so what's also fun because then you'd be like well who's paying for their followers these fake yeah 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 you pull up a uh pull up Ooh, a politician you know for me. you're 94 <laughs> percent. yeah it's still reading my follower data oh oh you're on it's that. saying i'm not real it's saying yeah. you're, <laughs> I'm just kidding. it's still reading the table's data. turned you've been a replicant <laughs> this whole time what oh. so uh, not the most visually interesting. If you guys want to go check it out, igaudit.io. I only have 83.3% real followers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You're a bot. Wah, wah, wah. Aww. Um, Brandon, our friend out in uh, Kansas City, his awesome thing of the week is that Google has now updated Android phones with Google Assistant. And, of course, this is the Android version of Siri. Um, and I think it's more, it's more widespread it's been updated for all of them, right? Because like, some phones have had it for a while. Is that right, Chilla? Which I'm sorry, I was still Google Assistant. Oh yeah, so not every yeah, not everyone's had it, but um, all the all the Pixel phones, all the like most of the Samsung. Yeah, it wasn't everywhere, mm-hmm. but now this is going out. You can now download it as so as an, as an iPhone option. user. I've been playing more with voice now. I have a faster phone that isn't weird with things. Um, and I, I was driving around today and then, and, you know, checked an email while I was kind of taking a break and it was like, I'm like, I was like, okay, I, I have an event I'm doing next week, next Wednesday. Right. And, uh, I was like, well, if I ask Siri to make the event that should sync with my Google calendar because everything comes down and reminds me in my Apple calendar. So, but I never go the other way. Um, so I asked Siri to make an event and then I didn't see it pop up on my Google calendar. Then I realized what if I ask Google Assistant to make an event in my oh, Google sure. Calendar and it was like a dream? Can you tell? Can you point Siri to the correct calendar? Because you probably have multiple calendars, don't yeah, you? Yeah, that's probably the other thing, too. And it doesn't seem... it Like, even, even the stuff it did ask me and made sure I had... Like, I ended up with... Um, it's the right times, but it just says event. Yeah. And I think I said... I said to put, put an event on my calendar for uh, such and such. So it was like event <laughs> wednesday at three o'clock or whatever right mm-hmm. uh versus it was a more fleshed out and you know and and i threw some tough stuff at google i said to, to reveal it's a it's public source live stream at K- kelly strayhorn theater i'm like oh i'm gonna have to respell strayhorn or something like that and and you know it comes up with like Publix ix works you know, or, or something like that. But after a moment, it just went and corrected everything. It was beautiful. To, it was beautiful. It was literally beautiful to watch it <laughs> respond to me. Um, so if you have not played with Google Assistant on your phone, and again, you're not going to be able to say mm-hmm, Google or whatever to pop it up. Yeah, but you I, you I can ask like... Siri to open it for you. <laughs> now, but... you have, and I don't have it on my phone. Do you have you have a you have a newer? You have a newer phone now. Yeah, I have a that plus supports now. Touch ID. Yes. So you know you can put 
Google Assistant on your, um, like your, what's that called? On the, on the front The page. widgets. You which, can put, which, which I do. You can put it on the widgets, but also the app itself, you can f- force touch and tap talk to your assistant what? and boom not great when i'm talk when i'm when i'm driving right is the biggest thing like i want to go like you want well, quick, if you had carplay quick, yeah if i had carplay yeah carplay is going to work with google assistant i bet you i bet you the app will come up as a button i don't it didn't oh it didn't does, does do you oh. have to do you have to open the app for it to come up as a button i don't think so because it automatically showed like stuff like tune in and, and google music but that was uh, it. okay that so was then they it. haven't add so it's not part google of it. if you're listening because <laughs> they can do it like it, yeah. it's, it's just it's just them implementing it right right uh, it's adding the ui it's adding the ui elements for that interface to mm-hmm. their app so this uh crazy kraus ron kraus um shared this one I, I didn't go through this video but he said did you did you watch this video i i, I watched this and it, it it's 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 pretty funny explain to me what's happening he says if you want to listen if you want to sound like bane no if you want to look like oh bane. look like bane uh, more than to me sound like pain um so this is a device and a, a lot of companies and enterprises are going with these open floor plans there's no cube walls it's kind of open space think work hard right with mm-hmm. the with the oh, their open area down think alloy think this room think this room <laughs> um you know you're you're sitting in this open air workspace That's or so even nice. at an airport right um yeah, because I, I was taking calls. I was in a I was in a community meeting at the airport, and they're like, "Yeah, we can hear like the announcer more than you." Yeah. And 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 do I? And I'm hearing the other, this other guy doing a call that was like a legal business call of some sort. And I'm just like, I don't know if I should be listening to this guys. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like or that. Or should he really be talking about this? Exactly. <laughs> um. So so the Hushmi actually is this device that goes over your mouth, that connects to your phone, goes over your mouth, and and, and has earbuds, and mm-hmm. it actually makes it so no one else can hear the conversation that's going on. So you, you're you playing the video, right? The guy gets a yeah. phone call from his mom. The guy gets a phone call from someone well, else. I don't know why I'm showing this video now. What, what is this yeah, video? I don't know what that is. I think I went is. to another video. <laughs> but he uh, he has to keep getting up from his desk and going to a kind of like a private lo- It insinuates yeah. he's going to a private location. Yeah. But with this device, um, <laughs> no one can, can, can see. And nobody's going to want to talk to you either. <laughs> So it comes around your face and connects in the front. Yeah, it's like the Bluetooth speakers that you've had on here, but they just connect around your face, and I don't know, maybe suffocates you. I I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, it was he, it was an interesting. It's an interesting concept. I just don't know. Are you going to keep this in a? Because if you have an open air area at work, you're you're pro- you probably sure. don't have a desk drawer. Yeah, yeah. Well, so are you going to keep this in like it. a locker or no. in your bag? It's in your bag, you know. I mean, this guy's just rocking a laptop and a pho- and an iPhone from several years ago from the looks of it. Um, <laughs> was that a 5S? How old is this thing? It's, um, it's pretty. It's it's. I remember looking at this quite some time ago, so it's old. Okay, okay. So it's called the Hush Me. Yes. Uh, keep talking, they call it. They, they, they say as the, as the tagline for this. So yeah, so it's not new. R R K B R K B. Um, so I guess that's out there. So go 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 look that up if you have that that kind of problem. Hey, it's solving a problem, right? Mm-hmm. It's definitely, definitely solving a problem. I just don't know. You're gonna definitely get some weird looks. I mean, it, hey, the Google Glass solved some problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it also created several more problems. <laughs> so uh, you know, this. I mean. Again, like I said, you know, you're you're probably gonna be like, oh, hey, Zach, like uh, the guy. Okay, I can think of a few instances where I'm just like, yeah, that guy could have used one of these, you know. So, um, anyways, uh, somebody who I'm sure is gonna be doing this for his own open office plan is Alex Cars of Alex Cars Media Design, our good friend here. He's done done a lot of work with us. Maybe some more here in the new in your future. Um, he's done T-shirt designs. He's done website work with us. And uh, some cool logos and everything. Uh, really cool graphic artist. And uh, he works around work with WordPress and everything as well. But uh, you can see, just just his own website. Just looks nice and clean. And look at that. Um, and he's done some great t-shirts for uh, definitely pro wrestlers and everything too. Uh, there's uh, Kikio, who's a wrestler, I believe, on the West Coast that we've talked to on the Indie Mayhem show um for the other part of this network uh but uh, uh go check them out at alexcars.com alexcars.media because uh logos merchandise websites photo and video projects um putting together the puzzle design and media for branding 
and to print to digital products. Check them out. Our good friend K A H, wait K A H R S dot media. Alex Cars Media dot media um, and AlexCars.com. Hung out with Alex actually Friday night. Uh, we we uh, hung out and watched a little bit of wrestling out there in California. So uh, it was good to catch up with him a little bit too. I uh, hope everything is going well with you, uh, Alex. Um, so uh, go support a friend of the show. So pull up what's next. Katie. Yes. Have you been watching something interesting on the internet today? <laughs> Because I think something interesting is happening in Washington today. Yeah, it was. A, um, I yeah. don't know if this is an awesome thing, but it's kind yeah, of eh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a ch- thing that should yeah. be considered. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg's getting uh, grilled mm-hmm. uh, in front of Congress. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg it's, goes to Washington. It's is, been a long <laughs> day right. for poor Mr. Zuckerberg, who looks like he's just dead inside at this point. Yeah, yeah. And essentially, they're trying to get to the bottom of this whole data breach and buying data and. If, if you oh, if you like understanding w- such concepts, <laughs> if you like watching old men be confused by social media, no, this is hey, the show for you. Not just men. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it's true. an equal opportunity confusion. Yes, <laughs> but but, uh, but it's uh, he did get taken. It, it was it was kind of fun to watch. There were a few of them that really took him to town. Mm-hmm. Uh, not didn't. Uh, because Zuckerberg, you know, at one point where they, were, they were like, you realize you have Monopoly? And he's like, no, I don't have Monopoly. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you do. And that was pretty fun to watch. Yeah. But they're, they're uh, kind of... Um, so easily, like when I realized, oh, hey, this is probably on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's definitely on YouTube. There were several streams. Um, uh, Washington Post, uh, CBS News mm-hmm. had, had one. I'm sure there are several others. But, but <laughs> whoever I was listening to, I think Washington Post, also said streaming on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the first washington press or a washington uh uh what, what do we testify what here senate hearing on twitch mm-hmm. <laughs> so, i think it's gotta be so i mean it might not be but I, so I, that's I, a thing that, that we have to deal with now um but yeah there's a little bit of it there uh, if you guys are on video with us i mean it's what you expect from a senate hearing and i don't think all the senators were there like i i, I was sitting we were sitting here listening to it and like one question got basically outlined and asked 20 minutes later? Yes. So, again, I think the senators are kind of coming and going because they were there all day. And uh, uh, nearly half of the Senate mm-hmm. are in line to ask questions, to yeah. have time to ask questions. Yep. Like 43 I believe that's around there. Yeah. Um, and they all have time limits. They all have time limits. Around 6 o'clock p.m., um, they, they said they were around two-thirds of the Senate. Mm-hmm. So there was a joke uh, popping up. And they're just like, well, at this rate, we think you'll be here until 2 a.m. Yeah. Um, which I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. But uh, it, it was a point where when I started listening, they were going into their first break. They're were, they were already about two hours in. And it was to give him a break because everybody else has short times, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think it's just gonna, he's just going to crack eventually, right, is, is, is the goal. Is that, is that the point for this kind of thing? I, 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 watching some of it, it, it seemed to be that they were like, you need to figure your stuff out or we're going to figure stuff out for you with yeah. regulations. Yeah, yeah. Which and I really, think it takes them so long to do anything. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, uh, well, it's like they just okay. We and can you imagine the outrage if the government said, "Yep, Facebook's going offline till we can figure this out." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and there's there's some very pointed questions about uh, ICE wants to do this, this, and this for predictive mm-hmm. control. Will you cooperate? And they say, they said, without a subpoena, we will resist. We will resist. We will resist anything from anybody with your data. I was surprised about the housing. I didn't realize how mm. much of that was going on where they were targeting ads for essentially grants for yeah, housing yeah, yeah. to specific races yep, and blocking yep. specific races from seeing the housing, which is totally, you know, federal, no way, you know, thing. Basically, they you know, basically a, we don't want you to live in this neighborhood mm-hmm. kind of situation. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to give you the opportunities to do it. We're not going to show you. The we're not going to market the opportunity towards you. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So, that yeah no that exactly and that like, that's whoa. and I think that was a you know and, and they ask questions like how many times has this been has this happened and it's like you know after saying hey we have this many users and this and I have this many people working on this problem you're not going to have the, those those answers I, I think they do this to everybody in a big company like this right there were a few questions what, they asked him that I was like you don't know the answer to this that's not <laughs> that doesn't look so good what, the, were, that they didn't know the answer that Zuckerberg didn't know the answer for okay and, like, like which ones did you, like there was you? um there was one there was a conversation of 
were you in the room when there was the conversation when this happened in 2015 to not alert uh, essentially the users that had data compromised? And he's like, I don't remember if there was a conversation. Like they just there's there's been there was a few times where it was just like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, that, sh- that doesn't look good. That's yeah. not a good look at least, mm-hmm. right? And this is a guy that sweated on stage in a hoodie, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, eight years ago, and now he's. I think for the most part kept himself poised. Um, he was very good about saying centered. You know, like I heard a lot of the same statements over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like, so he's been coached, of course. Mm-hmm. He's got the best people coaching him for something like this, right? Um, you could see kind of a points of frustration of trying to explain something. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 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 Doug uh, said in in so, you know something along the lines of you know watching it's it's like explaining technology to your eighty five year old uh, uh, grandfather, mm-hmm. you know, grandparent or whatever, you know, several 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 times. And, and again, it's not um, you know these. It was, it was actually stated on what the, whatever feed I was on is like, these guys are not using Facebook and that's obvious. The people asking the questions, their staff is using the Facebook, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> um, and some of them re- referred to that several times too. Mm-hmm. So, um, which is kind of irresponsible, which uh, it kind of bothered me was like, if you're going to be out there using and your face is essentially, you're representing yourself to your constituents on this particular platform and you know nothing of this platform. Mm-hmm. That's like, uh, you gotta at least but be aware. You hire the people that know. Like, yeah. like, I mean, that's, that's one of those micromanaging things mm-hmm. that you have to, or delegating things. I'm sorry. It's one of those delegation things. I think you have to do at that mm-hmm. level. But, but take the flip side of that, right? So if Zuckerberg can't answer our question, we're blaming him or we're holding him accountable. Right. But mm-hmm. in this, and he, but he has hired and delegated mm-hmm. experienced people to handle these types of matters. And maybe they didn't do the best job and he's ultimately held accountable. Same thing I think goes back to the, the, the Senate. I mean, they, they have to be able to understand and comprehend what's going on to make an articulate informed answer what uneven standards in our government <laughs> what are you talking about chilla I, anyways it's a, it was an interesting demonstration if you mm. if you were kind of curious exactly how the government dealt with because i know we always get these stories about um the government passed this thing and now it's going to break half the internet but you know <laughs> one of these i think just got passed and was snuck into another bill somewhere deep mm-hmm. in page 400 um that was referenced actually several times in this it was probably in an agricultural bill <laughs> i think it was in the budget bill to be honest um but anyways and and you know under the guise of uh hey let's stop porn and unfortunately we broke out all the internet and everybody's privacy you know i mean the government does as much potentially to destroy everybody's privacy as that you know and and worry about everybody's privacy while asking them to please give all of your information to the nsa and ice is an we should trust them too yeah yeah there you go Mm -hmm. so uh, before this gets more political uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but from a technology, this is important. So yeah. I think well, it's, from it's... a marketing standpoint, if your mm-hmm. your business is primarily advertising on Facebook, mm-hmm. this is the point where you're going. Okay, I need to see what else is out there. If you're not yes. already exploring your other options, you need to be looking at other options because yes. Facebook, the way that ads are done now, it will not be the same. It has already. I know that mm-hmm. we've discussed a lot about changes that have made just in the last month mm-hmm. that have severely changed several people we've known uh, yeah. strategy oh gosh yeah so which i mean this happens all the time mm-hmm. but it seems more severe now yeah so well, I, I think it's we've become more accustomed and normalized to the way we want to interact and facebook's been that platform for so long mm-hmm. if, if you go back to the days of bright kite <laughs> and MySpace and Plurk. Flip phone. Yes. Think of the churn mm-hmm. in those days and think about if you wanted to apply a, a, a normalized marketing campaign across social media that you would do today. Think about trying to orchestrate that back then. Mm-hmm. I think Facebook has just become the norm and it's become mature but easy. And to try to to try to go back and now hit 52 different social media platforms and whatever crops up next is going to be ridiculously difficult. What I'll be interested in, does this pave the way for someone new to come to the field? I mean, I installed Vero and I never, I think I yeah, had I a couple people and went yeah, back to it. That's right? it. That's but it. is this going to get 
something severe has to happen. They're like yeah. a bunch of people. I deleted Facebook. Like, great. You're all alone on Vero. <laughs> um, go oh, good. You know, and we remember what was it? Like Vero or something a, yeah. a bit ago. That was the minimalist one that cared about your data. I you like know. their UI, but yeah. Yeah. yeah they, well, they came, we talked about a little, a little bit ago about, mm-hmm. I, I know I didn't even get the name right, but they came back a little bit ago. Now they're an artsy fartsy app where you show off, art, you know, art things, you know, it's, it's interesting. So it's, it, but also you know, it's something to keep an eye out too. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Chilla, tell me about uh, pen pen hook pen pen. pen this is a really pen, this is a real quick. Easy is there one. a B in there? Is that a typo? The, yeah, that's a pen book. Yes, it's pen book. Sorry, pen. Oh, pen I, book. Okay. Pen <laughs> book. Oh, so I, I talk a lot about um different kind of um digital paper type stuff yes a, you a are lot a big for, fan a, a lot for ipad and, and other and other platforms android etc um microsoft's upcoming build conference will have um they'll be voting for their app creator of the year as part of the windows developer awards um penbook is in the running um so they have dropped their price from ten dollars down to zero Ooh. Um, looked like a pretty cool app i quickly loaded it on a um surface three that i have reacted pretty well um lots of different paper to pick from uh, kind of a lasso tool that lets you quickly uh draw circles around stuff moving around i was pretty impressed and even more impressed for the price of free um there is six days remaining on that free sale Mm. um so if you want to go pick it up if you like it go vote for them um but you can get that on the microsoft store by looking up pen book um, it does support PC and HoloLens if you have a HoloLens. Um, but I just thought it was a, a pretty cool app and a really, really nice alternative to something like OneNote. Um, so go check it out. Awesome. And you talked about this. I think we both shared this at certain points too. Westworld, uh, the people of Westworld were on Reddit. The people um, of Westworld? The, like people the, people of, the people of Westworld, yes. The creators. Yes, the, yes, the, the, <laughs> the, the robots, the... <laughs> I almost said a different thing. I don't know if I should spoil the end of season one, but I think the trailer does. Um, <laughs> but but uh, uh, they were putting out that if, because uh, you know, spoilers are an issue and the discussions over them sometimes get heated, especially on, I guess, on Reddit, right? And fan theories and all that. So they offered a a solution to just go ahead and give you the synopsis for the rest of the season. If a thousand people upvoted a, a, a post that they made, and so a thousand seems way too low. That seems this. way too low for something like that. So, so, and and what worried me about this topic is I, I watch Westworld, and I'm going to stay as far away from this. But because oh, yeah. this is out there now, and this is a 25 minute video, I I just hit the play button so I could see what the play time was on it. Yeah, so it yeah, says yeah. 24. And then and then shut your eyes so you didn't yeah, see any spoiler images. Yeah, I'm guessing maybe there's some ad in there. Or there's some whatever content in there along with it but i'm worried is this going to set the norm for some series i'm not sure how you stay away from spoilers or maybe you don't care by batching up you know multiple episodes in a row um i just i just don't want this to become the norm because i i felt like going through westworld the first time it was such a great story it had such great twists and turns things like you know, early seasons of um, Walking Dead. Um, I don't want those spoilers. I want uh, Game of Thrones. I don't want that. I, I want to have that experience and not have it ruined. Right. If, if this is the case, then why bother watching anything? And I can watch a 25 minute synopsis of every other TV show that, that's that's 12 or whatever, how many ever episodes. Um, it, it, this just concerns me. Absolutely. Um, and from concerned and confusing, you don't know how to add a podcast to Pandora. I, I'm not a big Pandora user, but if you were a pod, like, so can you add your podcast? To That's Pandora? what I'm wondering now. I'm looking it up. I'm trying to see. But anyways, <laughs> you said that uh, Pandora is doubling down on podcasts. Yeah. So they're actually doing, you know, they have the music genome product yeah. project. Yeah. That's it was a big they, reason I jumped into Pandora right, right off the bat. So they're doing a podcast genome hmm. project. Um, they realized that, they're missing certain pieces or certain things like podcasts in their catalog. If they can get more people, 
if they can get more content onto the platform like um, podcasts, they can get more converts from things like FM radio. Yeah. Um, and again, things like uh, Spotify. And it also means that you don't need to leave their app to go, find, go, something go find something else of a different format, right? Yes. So I'm hoping in an episode soon, we'll be saying find us on Spreaker. Well, I mean, I've already, you know, I've already, (laughs) I've already submitted for a Spotify, but I have no idea if we've been approved or not. And I don't have Spotify to go check. So let us know if you can find the awesome cast and other fine Sorgatron media podcasts over on Spotify. So, um, yeah, because I mean, even that's opening up a little bit more, able to get in there. And Um, since, since things like YouTube, and Google Music are just XML feeds. I wonder if they can just scrape that data and that's how they're going to build it and just redirect mm-hmm. um, to the actual content. It seems I, I, to make sense, right? It is just, just to pull that in. If they're just like, if they don't care about it. Um, and it but they're trying to catalog it and they're trying to associate it to your likes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I thought it was an interesting foray into the into that type of media and the submission page on pandora is only talking about music at this point yeah so you can submit your music if you're an independent artist it looks like you can individually submit your music to pandora for playing on there so that's pretty cool uh katie Mm -hmm. get another one for you here before we go tell me about uh the this garden app garden app uh so it appears to be so like they make it sound like it's another social media platform but it's not uh it's essentially <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not, not another sad thing where you and three friends are checking out right no this no. is how you keep up with your friends in real life what? Uh, essentially it'll go in your contacts and okay. give you like you essentially put in the time like how often you want to meet up with a certain friend um if you want to be reminded quarterly that you should be friends with them or you haven't talked to them lately um i think one of the things that's super cool is the fact that you can do uh like put in information about your last time you hung out um maybe what you did maybe what they something they talked about if you want to remember even remembering like their particular uh their spouse's name if you can't remember that or but it's it's the founder essentially founded it because they had a friend pass away and they were like, I'll, I'll catch up with them tomorrow. I'll catch up with them tomorrow. And they're like, this actually reminds you that, you know, it's been a couple months since you talked to somebody and you should be talking to them more often because you're oh. friends. But yeah, I thought it was kind of neat. Yeah, that is. Nice. I mean, I kind of, I honestly, it, and I feel like I've fallen out of it, but I used to have like reminders to go have lunch with, with, uh, you know, Will or somebody, mm-hmm. right? Uh, when he was working downtown. So, uh, it, it, you know, that's that that we kind of need that because everybody gets caught up in their lives and realize yeah Mm -hmm. i haven't talked to somebody for a year right it seems like there have been uh the article mentions that there were previous apps that use this for business applications obviously Mm -hmm. and which would be good because uh sometimes i do forget certain things about people after conversations i'm like what did we talk about? oh yeah i'm real bad with that (laughs) who's this person again yeah that's name but yeah i thought it was neat but even um who was it LinkedIn that did something like that, or or am I thinking Bump probably did something like that Ooh, back in the bump. day? Oh, yeah. Bump! Got, oh, I miss Bump. Yeah, but yeah, and we got bumped by Google, didn't it? There's no bumping in Google, is there? You need a bump. You just tell Google Assistant to pass me your contact information hey, or something. Hey Google, make chill on my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make make chill on my friend. <laughs> That's how I make friends. Isn't it? Hey, we're gonna be friends now. Hey, you, you're my new friend. Uh, Add anyways. your contact to my address book. Add you to calendar invites for lunch. It, it just forces it forces friendships. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but yeah, go take it. So it's just Garden app on, yeah. on uh, your, it's iOS. your devices? Garden Stay in Touch is the full name. Garden and it's Stay free. in Touch. Yeah. And it's free. Mm-hmm. There it's you go. Cute. Until they're in front of um, Congress. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Is it? Oh, no, no. I'll find it later. There's a lot of garden stuff in here. So. Oh, yay. <laughs> All right. Well, at that point, let me double check and make sure I wasn't missing out on anything here. Oh, hey, want to give a shout out to our friends at the Millville Music Festival. Uh, millvillemusic.org. If you missed last year's uh, groundbreaking 
uh, Music Fest. Uh, don't worry. It's coming back here on May 12th. Just a few short weeks here. And, of course, over at millvillemusic.org, they've been doing a weekly Millville Minute to give you updates on everything that's going on there. Uh, we are actually been helping them in-house here at Psych- uh, Psychic Media Services um, with the website and some of the media stuff going on around it. Um, I'm actually going to be interviewing somebody around it, I believe, tomorrow evening. So look for that on the awesome chat this week. Is she still on strike? Is she? Oh, she got a thumbs up. She's off. She's halfway off her strike. There you go. Uh, from producer Missy. Uh, so, what? Oh, what? Yeah, she has. She's been active she's on the all Facebook. All the way social over media. There. Well, I don't. I don't. I can't see that from over here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yes. There's, there's other things did happening. You, did you see this? What what's happening? Are you guys doing your own podcast over there? Oh no! Anyways, uh, shout to our friends Music dot org. We'll have some interviews coming up on Awesome Chat and everything like that. Is there anything to share for the the podcast class? No, no, no. no. That's for all. This that's is adult for, content. Oh no! Oh no! Um, uh, uh, coming up in the next few weeks, uh, we got we got a hell of a lineup. Uh, people joining us on the show uh, over the next geez, month, I guess. Uh, Scott McTaggart of uh, Pitchworks, uh, Brian Crawford of The River's Edge is going to come in to the studio. Uh, Cynthia Kloski of Shift Collaborative and Kenny Chen of Ascender, all scheduled within the next month. Check out the Facebook events to see what's going on. And, of course, we're here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. with or without guests and and uh, hanging out with uh, Katie and Chilla here. Katie at Dutters on the Twitter. Hi. You know where we'll be this weekend or I'll be this weekend? Where are you going to be? Steel City Con. Steel City Con. Yeah, nice. Chill will be there too. Nice. Yeah. Christopher will be there. Any, yes. big, any big guests going on uh, this time know. around? I think Alice Cooper is there. I Alice was, Cooper? Yeah, he was one of the ones. That he was, was just in Jesus Christ Superstar. He's doing all the things. It's crazy. His his guitarist was at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was pretty amazing. I was just like, was like wow, that's a, that, that's, that's a guitarist. And wow, he has a lady guitarist. <laughs> well, it, it was funny. If you watched NXT TakeOver, she was on the show. And they're like, it's Alice Cooper's guitarist. Oh, like, oh, that was her there. Yeah. Okay. And, and you're like, why are you introducing Alice Cooper's guitarist? <laughs> and then the next night she was on Mania. Oh, you're like, oh, just hanging out. Yeah. She was there like, doing a this? thing. Yeah. yeah Tiffany will be there. Out. What's that? Tiffany. Oh, Tiffany. Yeah. Gary Busey. As in, <laughs> uh, Tiffany as in like the, the musician. Tiffany. Yes. Yes. William Cat, the greatest American hero will be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's an all star cast. That's amazing. All right, um, and of course we'll be um, our our production crew will be up in Meadville for Night of the Superstar at the IWC. So if you want to see us in video action, and you're in the northern part of the west northwestern part of the state, come on down for that. Or up from Pittsburgh, it's actually going to be a fun show with a lot of big stars. Um, Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter. That's me, John Chilla on the Facebook. ChillaTech.net. Oh, we didn't say Scarehouse Podcast. Yeah, yeah, we have a thing. We have a podcast. We start. You will Fridays at noon. No. no, that was uh, that was the uh, Facebook Live. Yes. Uh, so maybe that'll be a thing. Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> Live will be a thing, we promise. Yes. yes. Maybe. Yes. It might not be a thing anymore. All right. Thank you. Have, you have a signal coming. Oh, we have the... a signal. What's up? I think I read all the events. I read all the events that are in here for me. Dun, dun. But there's a game night coming at the end of the month. I remember off the top of my head. So uh, I believe that's the 26th is the last Wednesday of the month. We're going to do a board game night in here. We had a lot of fun last month with Christopher Whitlatch um, uh, presiding over that. We played King of uh, Tokyo. I had a blast with that. I made a Hulk Hogan monster game piece since we were short one because the dog ate it. Um, oh, but yeah. uh, we, we have, I, think we, I have brought some other stuff. I brought some, uh, I'm bringing some Star Wars Monopoly in if you want. Uh, maybe I'll bring a VCR in. I have a VHS board game. One of those old ones, right? If the tape still works, I don't know. Somebody gave it to me like yeah. ages ago. Like I think one of the Mayhem Show guys gave it to me for some reason back in the day, and and I've had it ever since. And I've never like actually put the tape in anywhere to check it out. It's probably somebody tape form. But anyways, it was uh, a gag that you never got. There's a yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, ten years later. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much, everybody, joining us. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.